Hello everybody and welcome to the Nets. I am your host as usual, Rainbow, and joining us for the Majors Division here, we have Dave Stryker from Velocity University. Hello there. And Clutch Caliber from the Crusaders. Hello. Uh, these are our fourth and fifth place uh, for, for tank MVP, so, you know, they, they're kind of up there. Um, slightly es- semi-esteemed guests. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to be here talking about uh, playoffs and our predictions for that. Uh, so real quick, uh, we're going to talk about how playoffs are going to work for the majors division. Uh, due to the fact that we have five teams, we are only going to be having one quarterfinal game, which is going to be a uh, Velocity University versus Odyssey. And then they will go into the semis uh, where three teams kind of have uh, buys there, which is going to be uh, Bench Boys, which is going to be facing off against the winner of Velocity University uh, against Odyssey, and then Crusaders, which are going to be facing off against Dice Rolls in the semis. Uh, the winners of each of those will obviously be going to the Grand Finals. Um, but yeah, so let's kind of uh, get into some important notes um, for just on pickups and everything. I think the most notable one is Laser Blitz being picked up by Dice Rolls. Um, So do you guys have any thoughts on that? Uh, If not, I can talk about that for a little bit. I think think it's a good pickup for them. He definitely, I I know when we played him in the regular season, they had, like, struggled with their DPS players, but he was, like, really good. And um, we kind of struggled a lot against him. I haven't yeah. fought him personally, but from what I've been hearing is it should mix things up a little bit because uh, before our team, we had a pretty good read on dice rolls. But now with that pickup, that could change your read just a little bit. So that's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, our next uh, major pickup is Plorts for Crusaders. So I'll, I'll just let you take it away with that one, uh, Clutch. So... We we were down down a DPS for our bench voice match. We were like, oh no, not again, because <laughs> it the first time we faced off against bench boys, uh, we didn't have one of our DPS players, and then um we found a ringer and we found Plorts, and he was he he's honestly one of the reasons why we definitely won against bench boys, him and high quality, but Plorts brought so much like diversity in comps. We were able to run a lot more like double hit scan. A lot more Tracer Sombra, Tracer Ash, and I think he's he was a very very valuable pickup. Cool. So I'm excited to see what you're able to do with him. Um, then next we move on to the Bench Boys roster, um, in which uh, Sparex slash uh, Co slash Astergo <laughs> um, was removed from that roster um, due to just some kind of back end stuff and. Uh, they have added Hoopa um, onto their roster, who's an off-tank player. Uh, plays Diva, Sigma, Zarya, and Hog. Uh, so a really good diverse hero pool, uh, but is best on Diva. Um, but yeah, and so Hawk's going to be moving back to the DPS role. Um, and I think it's important to note, just in terms of how essential Sparex was to their roster, um, the last game they had against Dice Rolls, which Bench Boys was, di- did win, uh, was without um, Sparex. So I-, I definitely think they can still put up a strong fight without him, and I'm really excited to see what Hoopa's going to be able to do for that team. Um, but yeah, so let's kind of get into uh, our general predictions. So I say let's start with the community bracket here. Um, or I, th- I think we have it on the same image here um just waiting for producer to get sorted out so uh we are going to be seeing that here in a second kind of waiting here um cool so now that we have this up um for the first match which is velocity university versus odyssey um clearly everyone seems to agree on that one um yeah so and how the community bracket was done is we have the simple majority so just everyone who voted and then non-players is everyone who wasn't on a playoff team who voted. Um, so you can kind of get some of those different votes there. Uh, but so let's talk about uh, kind of the most interesting one here, which is going to be Dice Rolls vs. Crusaders. 
So I'm curious, just in general, hear your guys' thoughts. Um, I see Clutch, you have Crusaders winning. It is your own team. So I would hope you say that. Um, and Dave, you put Dice Rolls down as winning. Yeah. Um, I think on like from the, the Dice Rolls, I thought, I thought they were a better team than Clutch. And then now with that pickup, I think now they might even have a greater chance. I don't know about the new pickup. I haven't seen him play, so I can't actually say about that but it should be interesting and i think i don't think it's going to be like a cut and dry like um dice rolls is going to win i think it might go to a map five in that situation and it should see i personally am interested in seeing how that'll turn out i think it should be a close game for that one yes clutch what are your what are your thoughts as a crusaders player so i i think uh, the first time we we faced against dice rolls we obviously lost um three to two but I, I think um, that it, it could have we could have definitely won. Um, we just at the map five, our team never has been to a map five before. Now now we've been to like three or four. Th- I think about three now. Um, so I think if we go to that map five, we're all now cool, calm and collected. We're like level headed. We're like, okay, we've been in this situation many times before. We're gonna be okay this time. We will be able to pull out the win. Um, but I, I do think it's going to be a, a close match. I do think that it could go either way. But I think we would win at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those ones where it's... I, I don't think... I think everyone can agree it's going to be a close one. Um, just because of the fact that Dice Rolls seems to generally be more dominant, but they always go to map five. Um, and, and I think when you kind of play with fire like that, going into that map five range so much you know, there's always going to be a chance to slip up. So I, I think that that definitely gives much more of an opening for you guys to win there. Um, yeah. Although I do think you're a strong team and can can win on fully on your own rights, but I don't watch majors that much, so I can't personally say. I just have the scoreline to go I, off of. I will say we did, we have improved a lot since that game, and we we were kind of all over the place too. We don't, we didn't really our comm structures were kind of all over the place we're starting to get those down more and we're starting to figure out a comp that works for us yeah very important things in, in making a good use of that break time uh since the regular season um but yes moving on to our other semifinals match uh which is going to be bench boys versus what everyone seems to agree is velocity university um and i think since People generally agree Odyssey's going to lose to Velocity. I think if they manage to make it past Velocity, I think they would definitely lose to Bench Boys. Um, There's always a chance they can pull something off, but I think it's a higher chance that Velocity might be able to pull off an upset here. Um, But yeah, so I I clearly think Bench Boys is going to win. Silent agrees. The community generally agrees. But both of you guys think Velocity is going to win. I know Dave Strucker, you're a bit biased being on the team. Um, A little bit. But so I'm curious, Clutch, why you say that. And then Dave, what makes you believe in your team? So I I think Velocity is going to win because their team has been getting better. And like the past two times that we faced them, the first time we played them, we thought they were a very easy team. The second time we played them, the score doesn't give the the match a justice, I don't think. If we won 3-1. That seems like a pretty dominant win, but the maps were a lot closer score-wise. Like, it, it could have gone either way, but I mm. think Velocity as well has been improving a lot. And, like, they have Audacity, and that guy's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that guy's kind of kind of cracked a little bit sometimes. Kinda, kinda, yeah, kinda DPS MVP, good. by the way. Yeah, just, just, just a wee bit, you know, just nothing too crazy. A wee bit pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, so Dave Stryker, tell us a bit about what you've kind of been doing in the break that, that makes you just believe that you can uh, take out Bench Boys. Um, so definitely, um, we've all been, I think the main thing that, um, that we've been kind of working on this uh, little past season is we haven't been scrimming much, and but we've been doing a lot more individual practice. So we've been kind of, um, really kind of working on our individual play, and we're going to be starting the scrims up uh, real here real soon. And plus, um, like I think the main thing that was um, that makes Bench Boys honestly is such a threatening team 
is the fact of not that just the individual skill, like it's there, but honestly, I think the more threatening thing from their team was how all six players felt like they were just a cohesive unit. And I think since losing milk, I think that's honestly going to be the opening that's going to allow us to actually destroy them. Um, okay. That that's honestly that's why my bet is going like we're going to beat Bench Boys. I don't think it. I think it'll be a close fight, but I still think like I think losing milk was I think a big hit to Bench Boys, and I don't think they want to admit it. Yeah, I I, I definitely think you know it, it could have that impact, but um, I don't know that that showing against dice rolls to me kind of proves they're still pretty strong, which is why I put Bench Boys as winning that. I think there's a chance i uh, like I, I think there's i'm i i always like to think there's always a chance but um I, you know i i think it, it's possible we could be seeing upsets from you guys um, yeah it's it's definitely going to be a close game like there's no no doubt about it. it's going to be a close game it's going to be a hard fought game i don't think it's going to be like the last time we fought them where it's going to be just be an easy 3-0 we're definitely working on our comms and our individual skills so i think i think we should like if let's say that we are going to lose that game as long as i in my opinion as long as we take one to two maps that's a win in my book and then we just need to cap out that third one you know yeah but yeah i i think it's one of those ones where it's like even if you lose you as long as you can put up a good fight you walk away happy um but yeah so I, we're gonna be having a grand finals episode but uh real quick just working with what information we have right now um what are your guys' thoughts on grand finals? You know, I it's looking like there's I'm really four possibilities out of five teams. So, um, although the one philosophy university vote is a a bit biased there, coming from Dave Striker, but maybe maybe. But yeah, I mean, I I think I, I'm I clearly put Bench Boys down, but I think Crusaders has a chance. I think Dice Rolls has a chance. I think there's you know that five percent for velocity. Um, but I, you know, I mean, if any of the teams, any of those top three teams took it, like, I wouldn't be too surprised, really. I'll definitely say if it's, if, if it's Velocity University versus Dice Rolls, Dice Rolls doesn't stand a chance. Like, I'm pretty sure we have a full read on their team from I their team. That's, that's fair. You guys were the ones that beat them, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. I think we beat them twice. I don't know how many times we actually well, fought them. I, I mean, I think they only had one loss. So, Am I, yeah, I think. I think oh no, they, well, they they lost to bench boys as well. Sorry. Yep. So they, two losses. Yeah, I think we did take one of them. Yeah, I, I think and that was, was like immediately after our boys. calm restructure too. So that should just give you an indication of how important that was. Yeah, I I heard you would frequently uh, lose your voice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have a big old glass of water next to me, and I use those five minute breaks to refill that thing. Because, oh man. Yeah, it, it, carrying comms can be really hard. So, uh, that restructure is definitely important. Um, but, yeah, so I mean, I think that pretty much covers all the stuff to talk about for majors. Is there any kind of other things you guys want to discuss or any closing thoughts you guys have on the majors playoffs? Uh, I want to face Velocity University in the finals. Honestly, I feel like like I feel like it's going to be Crusaders versus uh, University. Like I don't, I, I think we're going to be able to beat out Bench Boys, and I don't think Dice Roll stands a chance. No, but I think it's going to be Crusaders versus University. I do think it's going to come down to I, that. I would honestly really like that, just because I felt like when I when we first started the season, I felt Velocity and Crusaders had like a rivalry going for a little bit, and I was like, this is pretty fun. <laughs> so I really hope we go to the finals and. And I think that'd be a really good showing. I think that the scores would probably be a four three in either team. Oh, definitely, yeah. Like that was that's no. There's no way that's gonna be definitely a close game. If it's yeah, you you versus me, close game, easy. Yeah, I mean, I honestly think any of these teams really matching up in finals is gonna be close. I I, I just like don't see any. I don't see a role happening in grand finals for majors. I don't, I don't see bench boys three owing anybody through playoffs. No. I mean, I don't, I don't see anyone 3 0 anyone. No, I, no I, the definitely. only way there's a 3-0 is Velocity versus uh, Odyssey. 
that's the only uh, one we could see happen. Yeah, but I'm, I think we're going to lose one. I think we're going to lose the first match because our team kind of <laughs> sucks at control. So, yikes. And I mean, any game that Dice Rolls is involved in, I think it's like it, it's in their contract that they have to lose a map every game. Um, it's just like, they're just like, well, no, we have to make it interesting. We have to lose one map <laughs> every game. Um, but yeah, so cool. Well, uh, thank you guys for joining us to kind of give your analysis and thoughts here in the majors division. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's that's really all we have for majors. I'm really excited to see how these playoffs are going to go. Uh, we should be having every single match cast, and I believe they are both getting scheduled for. Uh, no, uh, Velocity University versus Odyssey is going to be Saturday. And I think Dice Rolls and Crusaders might tentatively be Sunday, but don't hold to that because it's not been officially scheduled. Uh, but yeah, so we are going to go to a short break and be back with the Miners division here in a second.
You just gotta keep moving forward.
we are back. Sorry for the extended break there. We were just having, you know, a couple issues, but uh, we are back here with the Miners Division. Uh, we are joined by Sempra, a.k.a. Just Joe Kings, the DPS MVP from Velocity Force. Hey, what's up, guys? And we have Stuff and Things, uh, was, you know, third in tank MVP um, from Hyperion. Hi, how was a Glad we're here. Glad we're doing well. I got caught between two sentences there. That was weird. You know, it, it happens. It happens. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're here to talk about the uh, Miners playoffs. And so real quick, um, I just want to mention the pickups that have happened, uh, or, or rather just general roster changes uh, since last Nest. Um, the biggest one, I think, uh, being for Talonfire. Uh, where they lost Daz, who is their main tank, and they have uh, since picked up Bowsy. Um, you know, who who was uh, on Ignis, uh, was one of our casters, uh, was now going to be playing for Talonfire. Um, I think that one's interesting, because I, th- I think Daz did a good job, although he was very aggressive on that uh, main tank role. Um, but uh, Bowsy, I think, generally played support previously, so I think it's going to be interesting to see how he's able to transfer over to the main tank role. Yeah, it would be especially interesting to watch, given that we don't know how that factors into their comm structure. Because swapping yeah. out a main tank, especially if that's a central component to how your team communicates, is a massive change. And even with a good two weeks off, you might not have enough time to adjust, especially if you're only practicing once or twice a week. Yeah, and I think the play style change would also be a huge difference. Because I don't know um, like how Bazzi's play style is. And since Daz was so over-aggressive, I, Bazzi... I'm almost positive doesn't play that way. So even just that small change could really affect how the team performs. I um, it, and it could affect them positively, in all honesty, um, if they're able to adjust to it quickly. It um, could, but we'll have to see what they do, as at least in my experience, facing off against them, their best look was always double off tank. And now that that's not really a thing, so we're going to have to see how that team can adjust to that. Yeah, yeah. Except I know Shadow is really great with the uh, hog. Okay, so apparently he's a flex tank for Ignis, but I, I don't know. I, yeah, so I, I guess he can't play both, but it's always interesting. There's players who kind of kind of stay in that in between sometimes. I um, think. But yeah. And when you when you like when you play with your main tank on your team, you grow accust- accustomed to your main tank, and it's just hard to swap that out. Even if they aren't the aren't the central component of your comm structure, it's hard to play with a new main tank just because you're so used to how your main tank plays. And I think that it it'll make a difference in Talonfire's in Talonfire's gameplay, whether it's for good or bad. It's just it's it's something you have to look out for. Yeah, I I, I was once on a team that we we had two main tanks that would sub in and out. Uh, one was heavily aggressive, the other was very passive and defensive. And I gotta say, it was a hard switching between them uh, yeah, constantly. It, 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 and that was that. <laughs> that was like. In single scrims, so they have like more time to adjust to a singular play style. But uh, I, I definitely think it's gonna be interesting. So I'm looking forward to see how they have adjusted to that. Um, moving on, the uh, only other pickup that has happened so far. There's definitely still time for more to happen before the games. Um, is Marember being added to MSBY's uh, support? He's been around Al a little, little bit. I don't remember that much about him. Um, but I definitely think that's going to be another interesting one to look out for. And since it's just a pure pickup, they can always just not play him if it, if it doesn't end up working out that well. Yeah, but given that it's pure pickup, it makes you wonder if they're looking for a specialist in something or if they yeah. had someone that's not going to be present for a certain number of games. Yeah, yeah so it's, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how he ends up getting used there. I, I think like picking up somebody over trading someone on your team is a lot easier. Because you don't have to play that member, yeah. Uh, compared to having to forcibly play that that swap, so I think this is good for MSBY a lot more than it is bad for them. So it's going to be a gen generally a positive change for them. Yeah, and it's usually easier to adjust to a support that's different than your main tank being separate, given that the main tank is generally the one who's setting the tempo, deciding the fights, selecting the location for them. You know, it's. It's easier to slot in a support, and I will send for my supports all day. Like, yeah, especially since, like, with, with supports, it tends to just be, like, are they 
doing more or less healing, as opposed to just completely different playstyles with varying levels of skill on tank. It's just like, cool, am I getting more healing and thus a more ability to do stuff, or less healing? So, I think that can be a little reductive to what sports are doing, but I, I understand. Well, I mean, I'm, uh, look, look, I'm, I'm, also, I'm a support player, but it, it yeah. to some extent, it breaks down a lot more to that than for tanks. For tanks, it changes the whole way a team is moving. Someone in chat said that they're actually a main is tank. A main tank? Didn't I? I I could have sworn he was a support player. I thought I saw that that was what was announced. Anyway, whatever. Then ignore all everything we just said and apply it to main tanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I, I swore he's a support player. It, maybe Ping's just lying to me. Well, even still, if they had a main tank, then that could significantly change the way that they're playing. They might. We still don't know if they're looking for a specialist or if they're looking to replace someone that is maybe underperforming in their eyes. It's hard. We just don't know without being in that team's conversations. Yeah. Um, but cool. So now that we kind of have the um, pickups out of the way. We are going to move on to the actual playoff bracket structure. Uh, so this is going to be different from majors. So we have six teams in the minors playoffs. Um, so we are going to have two quarterfinal games. It is going to be Velocity Force versus Talonfire and Odyssey Esports versus the MSBY Black Jackals. And whoever is the highest seed is going to be facing off against Koala Kings, and whoever is the lowest seed still remaining is going to be facing off against uh, Hyperion. So it's not just direct, um, you know, whoever wins Odyssey versus MSBY it goes against mm -hmm. Koala Kings. Um, but yeah, so I'm curious to kind of get into the predictions uh, for, um, you, know, you know, these games. So kind of starting with quarterfinals, Velocity Force versus Talonfire. Um, it, a lot of us seem to, and by a lot of us, I mean uh, all of us, seem to be going the way of Velocity Force. Um, I mean, Velocity Force just ha had a really strong season. And Talonfire, with the adjustments they're going through and with their general showing, I find it hard to really give it to them. I think they have a chance, but I don't know, Velocity Force is just looking too strong in this for me. You know, it's not just because we have a Velocity Force person here, but I tend to agree with that sentiment. Talonfire, their best look was double off tank. And now double off tank isn't a thing. And even with adding a main tank, that can be such a significant change that it's kind of a wild card, so I'm not going to take it all away from them, but my prediction is that Velocity Force can do it in four maps. Okay, yeah, so just the dropping one seems reasonable. I uh, might be I might be a little bit biased here. I also think Force can pull through with it. Talonfire is a strong team. I mean, Dark Ember and Taken Wallet are two really, really strong DPS, but I think we can work around Talonfire, and with their change in structure, I think it just... It might make it a little bit easier for us, uh, but overall, I think it's just gonna be a fun match. It's, I mean, I think the majority agree that it's it's gonna be kind of close. Yeah, yeah, it is. I don't even think there's gonna be possible. I think it's gonna be an exciting match, um, and just just to see how well Talonfire is able to perform, um, even if they don't end up getting the win. But I definitely think it's possible, especially if you guys end up slipping up in some way. Um, moving on to our next quarterfinals game, we have Odyssey Esports versus MSPY, another one where everyone seems to fully agree. Um, it going the way of MSPY, and I I can probably tell you the direct reason why is because MSPY has already beaten Odyssey at the end of the regular season. It was literally the last match, so we know that it's pretty current. Um. It, to be fair, there was definitely a lot of close moments in that game, especially on uh, the uh, escort map. It was on Havana. Um, but MSPY has just been on a total upturn recently, and I think it's kind of hard to deny the strength they have coming into playoffs. Well, it's not only that they just beat them, it's the MSPY has been on a hot streak all the way through this and just seems to have the stronger mental having bounced back in and just really committed to winning games here and then if you watch the game versus odyssey they just look like the infinitely more structured more communic communicative and just more prepared for what they were going into so i don't see that changing or being any different i think msby can take this in a 3-0 yeah i have to i have to agree with anything like that um i think msby they really showed themselves close to the end i mean 
I have to be honest, I was one of those people that didn't believe they could make playoffs, but they made it and they're here and they're they aren't fifth or sixth, they're they're pretty high up there. So I think as much as I want Odyssey to show themselves and prove themselves as a team that came in late, but uh but but it's pulling their own weight, I I think MSU is gonna take this. And I, I apologize. Uh MSBY made fifth, not fourth. I mean, all that matters is that you get in at this point, playoffs. Yeah. Anything could happen, and I wish we all disagreed more because I think it'd make for a more interesting conversation. But, you know, I think that looking at especially that last game, I just don't see any way the MSBY doesn't pull it out here and do really good work. Yeah, I I'm, I will say just kind of um, in defense of Odyssey, it, I haven't talked to any of the players. I haven't really had any conversation with them in the past two weeks. So they could have been grinding really hard to have had huge, you know, calm restructure, something like that. And we may be seeing them, you know, come back from break really strong. Um, so it, I, you know, possible. you really don't you never know. What, you never know what two weeks off is going to do with a team, especially if that team isn't practicing, isn't staying on it and keeping their edge going. Cause it's perfectly possible that all that momentum has fallen off during a two week bye. Yeah. And I, I think, yeah, it's like, as you, one of you mentioned just the the MSU I'm maybe losing the momentum because I mean they were kind of on that win streak and, and doing really well, but maybe with the break it could have it could uh you know slow that down. It was also under a packed schedule, so we haven't yeah. seen them after having taken a break. Yeah, um, yeah. So I don't think that's a, a game to look for an upset on. Um, although, although I clearly believe in msby if you look at my bracket but i definitely think that's one you can see an upset on um moving on to the semis game so assuming we're everyone's correct in quarterfinals uh just since we all agreed keep it simple um hyperion uh will be going up against the lower seed which would be msby um so in that game Everyone going for Hyperion. I go for MSPY. Um, I'm not going to lie on this one. It's bias. I'm not going to lie to our dear audience here. Um, I-, I have bias for that team. So I mean, <laughs> Oh, no, I understand. I have bias you for know. one of teams as well. It should be very obvious which one I have well, bias y- for. Y- yeah, Hyperion. And <laughs> it is worth noting that uh, the MSBY has beaten Hyperion once. However, yeah. I will point out that Hyperion was now main tank and main support for that game. So you're basically facing off a C grade roster at that point. Yeah. Um, it, 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 separate, you can go. Sorry. My bad. Uh, I have no bias towards any team. I'm I'm not any of those teams, and I think that Hyperion is going to take this pretty easily. I think Hyperion lost that game against Black Jackals because of their roster. I think losing your main support and main tank is pretty a pretty big deal. And I think uh, I think Hyperion is just going to take this pretty easily. Uh, no offense to MSBY, but that's just what I think. No, and we are definitely putting in the prep work. And we have to be ready for so many different teams in case there is an upset. But we are putting in the prep work. We've been scrimming around 3,300 lately and even pushing to 35 at some points. So we're really putting in the work to make sure that we're ready for the playoffs. Yeah, and... Like, don't get me wrong. I think you guys are a really strong team. It's, it, it is literally nothing against me thinking how strong you are. I just really believe in MSBY because I know, I, I've I talk to the team frequently. I know how much work they're putting in, and I think it's paying off a decent amount. Um, I, I do think there's a decent chance you guys take it though. So everybody <laughs> likes an underdog, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, pretty I, much. I wish I'm, them luck, but not too much. I'm always a fan <laughs> of underdogs. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, moving on from that, uh, getting into Koala Kings versus theoretically Velocity Force. Um, we have both me and Semper going for Velocity Force, everyone else going for Koala Kings. Um, my reason I went with Velocity Force here comes down to the fact that whenever I hear teams talk about other teams, I hear a lot of people talking about worrying about Hyperion, obviously. And worrying about Velocity Force. I do not hear that much fear for Koala Kings. Um, so while they have the same map de- deferential as Hyperion, I think that's something you just have to think about. It is how much teams worry about um, other teams. And so 
that's why I kind of give Velocity Force the edge there. I agree with that. I think it's Qualkins is good, but they're not dominating. I mean, they're when you think of the dominating team, you think of Hyperion right away. I just think Qualkins, um, the day of our match. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie about it. We got slapped pretty hard, three zero. It wasn't even close. But uh, like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna to reveal things about people who don't want things to be revealed about. But I just think that we had a bad day that day, and I know it's not an excuse. Some people are gonna listen to this and be like, "That's kind of stupid." But we had a bad day. I mean, it was a rough start. I just, I, I think that Boris has what it takes to beat Qual Kings. But uh, I have bias, obviously, because I'm on the Forest team. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So it uh, stuff. What, what's your kind of thoughts on why you pick Qual Kings there? So, Koala Kings just... I don't have that much experience against them, because when we went up against them, it was a fast 3-0, um, all the way down to, like, full-holding Dorado on them. So we don't have that much experience against Koala Kings, but they have proven themselves to be a solid team against all of the other contenders here in the minors, and they have beaten Velocity Force in the past, and I just... Even with a bad day, given their history, I just don't see that as a changing trend. Yeah, and, and uh, just some my own personal curiosity. Um, when was the three zero against Koala Kings? Uh, the only time we played them. I don't well, but uh, it was. okay. Yeah, because it was like because if it was earlier, it, it has less impact on the presence. They could have gotten a lot better. And if we see Koala Kings just type here on again, it may have a different outcome. Possibly, but I don't believe so. Well, yeah, <laughs> you are on Hyperion. <laughs> this um, is accurate. But yeah, so going into finals, um, it, it pretty much it's generally thought it's going to be Hyperion versus someone else or versus Velocity or Koala. Um, so I don't. Know, I think that's interesting. I think it, it is going to come down to whether Hyperion gets beaten, as they are viewed as the strongest team. Um, I fully think that they, you know, c- can win. It, assuming my favorite of MSBY doesn't beat them, uh, I, I think I think they win finals. Personally, no, MSBY does not beat us. Yeah, I'm 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 fully aware of you thought. Um, I mean, the C grade team, it was still close on C grade down to very key roles. Yeah. So. I mean, yes. I think I think Force has what it takes to be Hyperion. We've been practicing a lot. I mean, I, I'm just going to talk about Reed because I think Reed is someone who wouldn't mind being talked about. The person you saw against MSBY, that's like a shadow of how he is now. So uh, I, I don't think anyone's prepared for how good we actually are. You know, I actually do hope that you guys beat Koala Kings for a variety of reasons I'll keep to myself, but <laughs> it would be interesting to see you guys in the finals as well. Be a, it'd be a different look than what we were expecting, and it's one that I hope that we get. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely really excited to see how this all pans out. Because while I think everyone has a general good idea of kind of what the numbers tell us and what, what history tells us, but I think that a number of these teams have that upset potential. Um, and, and the top teams have the you know potential to get upset. Um, so I, I don't, I'm really just looking forward to seeing how, just how, how it ends up working out. Because um, I think that that could end up looking very different from what the predictions are. Possibly. We'll just have to wait for playoffs and see. But I don't see any major upsets happening. I think Velocity Force might be able to beat Koala Kings, but, you know. We'll have to see what happens there. Otherwise, I think we're just going to see more of the same that we've seen throughout the season. I don't think Overwatch is a game of rock, paper, scissors. I don't think that any team can beat one team 100% of the time. I think that any match can go any way. So I think just waiting to see what's going to happen is our best. Like what we can, that's the best thing we can do. Well, yeah, said. So, um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, uh, sorry, just playing out here, but, um, yeah, so I mean, we kind of already talked about final thoughts, um, but just, is there anything else you think should be discussed, um, or, or, or any just other final thoughts you guys have? 
Um, I think it's going to be an exciting playoffs. Um, I do agree if there is potential for upset, but like I already said, I think numbers are, should pan out the way that they've panned out during the regular season. I think MSBY has a chance to possibly, you know, do something. If they didn't have to run to us, if they ran to Koala Kings, they might make it to the finals. But unfortunately, we're going to be the gatekeepers. I think I have to agree with that. I think it's almost confirmed in my in my mind. Hyperion is making it to the finals, and if we make it to the finals, we have to we have to prepare for Hyperion. As uh, much as I love the Cinderella story of MSBY, it's just <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah, I think Hyperion is going to carry on their legacy of being that one team that no one can beat. And I think that uh, hopefully the finals is where we can prove that wrong. Yeah, I I think I think why I it, trust in Hyperion having an ability to lose is because of last season how much more that differential was um well, we, our, our, our top team lost one match in three stages so it's about 30 games i think it was so just the the giant difference of one loss out of 30 versus one loss out of 10 i think i view hyperion as a lot more beatable um, it's also worth noting that all but two of Hyperion's roster have won championships in GGNA. Yeah, and I mean, like, like I said, I, th- I still think you're a tip team. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Absolutely. Like, I just like scaring everyone else with facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that is all we really have for the Miners division. Uh, I am going to be handing it off to our esteemed uh, mathematician, Misfit. Uh, with his beautiful m- metric. This is going to be the last time he is showing off his metric. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys all for joining us, and thank you to our guests here as well. Uh, yeah, but yes, we are going to go to a quick break before we switch over to the metric.
All right, hello everyone and welcome back to the nest. This is going to be the final misfit metric of the season. Uh, I'm excited to bring it to you. I did a lot of work for this one today. I have been working for the past about like five hours because I had to redo all of the miners math to account for 10 teams being in the division instead of nine. So that was fun. I, I have lost a lot of brain cells trying to do all this math. Let's get into it here. A uh, lot of lot of stuff happened this week. There were some uh, some pretty pretty good matches in minors, but we will start off with majors first. Uh, majors bench boys was able to take down dice rolls despite losing milk and co over the course of the season. They were able to take that down in a nice three zero victory. Crusaders pulled off the reverse sweep against Odyssey uh, after coming really really close to dropping it. They were able to come back with. I believe it was uh, C. Ronaldo's heroics. That was what I have been told, is that he came in on the DPS and kind of kind of diffed. But, uh, you know, congratulations to, to that. Uh, Velocity University able to pull down commitment. So most of these matches going the way uh, we'd expect them to go. Not really big changes in the Misfit metric, uh, but these will be the final metrics on the screen here, and we will get into the changes that happened from last week now. Uh, again, not too much of a change here. Uh, just Velocity Unity overtaking Odyssey. And now I believe the Misfit metric accurately represents majors, if I'm not mistaken, unless Bandicoots is ahead of Tempest in the standings. I, I do not know for sure on that. Uh, but I'm really happy because uh, this means it, it turned out somewhat well if it ranks the teams correctly according to standings. At least the top five teams are ranked according to standings. Uh, so that makes me happy. Uh, it means I did something right. I am looking to revise this formula if I do decide to use it for Outlet Season 4, which will 100% be coming. Uh, but for now, these are your final numbers for majors season 3.5. Um, so that's all. We're going to get into the minors section now. Minors had some more interesting things happen uh, because I had to update everything based on uh, Odyssey's being in the thing. So I went back and did redid all the math for every every game and accounted for there being 10 teams in division. The only week that was spared was week one because I don't believe they had really any games from week one or it was something something along those lines. Uh, maybe they only had one for week one or something. They they only played seven games. Um, so there was a lot of change. We'll get into that later here. But uh, for now, the games that happened, the Hyperion 3-0 Road Warriors, to no one's surprise, Koala Kings taking down VMT. Uh, Talonfire getting 3 0 would by Odyssey Esports. Evidently, there was an issue with one of their players in that match. So not sure how accurate that would be, but still uh, very, very interesting, I should say. Uh, I will point out really quick that my producer currently has the wrong image queued up for the next uh, switch, which is very unfortunate. Uh, but I will continue on here. Uh, Velocity Force losing to Kraken Skulls. That could be a little bit of a, a sign of weakness. But however, I think it's a little bit more likely that that Velocity Force was kind of just uh, memeing around, maybe sandbagging a little bit. Uh, it, it is more likely that they were not giving it their all. However, I don't know. I didn't watch the match. It's possible Kraken Skulls just showed us. A, a spot of brilliance. Unfortunately, it will not be enough to get them into the next round of the tournament. They will not be going to playoffs. Velocity Force has secured their spot there. Uh, next up is Odyssey, who, of course, like we mentioned, 3 0 Talon Fire. Uh, MSBY took down Talon, or the Fire Nation, excuse me. Uh, and yeah, that wraps it up for the games we had in minors. We will now be getting into the change, which is the correct graphic now. Thank you very much, Silent Marine. We love you very much. Uh, a lot of changes in the Misfit metric here. Um, and this one is slightly less accurate than majors. So I don't think this represents power rankings. and I don't think it represents standings uh, at all. Uh, Hyperion Qual Kings, obviously in the right spots in the one and two seeds, but Odyssey and MSBY up above Velocity and Talonfire, a little bit interesting in my opinion. I know Talonfire has been memed on, but I do think they are a pretty solid team with some pretty solid players. I think the sixth seed is a little bit strange for them. Um, However, these will be the final numbers for the miners metric. Obviously, some some changes I could have made here. Something that I, I do want to point out is I believe that my my metric was kind of when I was making the metric, I think it got uh, kind of influenced by the fact that I started with majors uh, and majors has less teams. And I, I think that the making the outcomes count for 15, uh, 15 points of SR. Uh, I, I think that was more favored in the majors division where there are less teams. So the maps are costless, but in the minors division where you can get more and lose less for maps, uh, I think 15 was a little bit too high to put for the outcome. So a lot of these teams saw some very, very large changes. And I think that's what led to some of these uh, discrepancies you see discrepancies you see between this and the standings. Uh, however, I, I'm still happy with the, with how it came out. It did accurately put the top six in the top six and the bottom four in the bottom four. So I guess that's something to be happy about at least. 
but yeah, that's going to do it for me. And that's going to do it for the misfit magic. I appreciate the support you guys gave me over the course of the season. I put a lot of work into this uh, and I, I am really happy with how it ended up, even though there are some improvements that I can make to it. And yeah, I, I've, I've really enjoyed having this segment all season and I look forward to doing it again in the next outlet season. But for now that is going to be all from the nest. We will see you again before grand finals. Be sure to tune into playoffs and we'll see you next time.